Hi everyone, welcome back to Heavenland Devotions. The Little Green Pasture, God bless you. I pray that everybody is blessed and thirsty, thirsty for the living waters. Before I get started, of course, I'm going to pray. And while I feel that word in me, I don't want to lose a minute of time. So would you play, pray with me? Heavenly Father, I come before you and I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, so much for another opportunity, Lord Jesus, to bring this earthen vessel, Lord, to you and ask you to anoint me and to be with my mouth as just as you were with the mouth of Moses and that you would move in my heart just like you were moved, Lord, on earth when you were on earth, when you were moved with compassion or moved with mercy. I pray that everything that I speak would be because you are moved and yet you're moving in me. I ask for nothing less. And I ask you to reveal yourself in this word. I don't always know what I'm going to say, Lord, but I commit myself to you. I submit to your Holy Spirit. I pray that this message will be empowered by your Holy Spirit and that, Lord, that you remove it that I, I will remove myself from being the front and center. That's not what I want. Lord, I set you before me. Like it says in Psalm 16, for I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. Therefore, I shall not be moved. Praise God. So now I go in your name and I ask for your blessing. And that you would touch the lives of many. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, all of us, I don't know if all of us, but we have been aware pretty much over the last 48, 24 hours that there was a bill passed to uh, take two scriptures, one out of Acts and one out of the book of Matthew, and criminalized it. I, I mean, this is something none of us would have ever thought would happen, yet we knew something like this could happen. And that there's a, it's that you could be prosecuted for using those verses. So I guess it's going to change like the whole landscape of those of us who are on podcasts that we're not allowed to use those two scriptures. And just for the sake of being clean, and I want to keep this YouTube channel going, I'm not going to mention those scriptures. I will add a link to the bottom of this description box of the article, and you can read it yourself. So I was this morning I was in devotion, and I was up early as I normally am. And I had a dream last night. And let me say something about dreams because some people say uh, they don't believe in dreams or they just think dreams are something that you can't rely on. But let me tell you something. There were 21 recorded dreams in the Bible, all of which were coming from, uh, came from God. I believe that we are the people that have dreams and God does warn in dreams he gives us preemptive advantage against the enemy in warfare when we we have dreams when we when we are in certain circumstances and we need a breakthrough we need wisdom i could tell you this much not just myself but i've known people over the last 50 years of my life who are powerful believers that are humble believers and god has given them so many dreams and they were veteranized in their dreams and the interpretations of them and i know these people and i could say for myself if it were not for certain times that god had given me dreams then the enemy would have had an advantage over me or i would not know what direction i would have prayed it's like pulling down the veil and seeing in the invisible and i stand by it um so last night i had a dream and i woke up from the dream and i came right up and i got up and it was one i think it was like 1 40 in the morning 
but that is my time. And some of you may think, Joni, that is so ridiculous. You're getting up too early. And I say, not too early for me. God has always made me that servant of the night. And there's many servants of the night who get up. It is a watch hour. It's something he puts in you. He, you know it. It's, and he gives you the power to do it. It's the same as somebody who wakes up at 10 o'clock in the morning, their time, or 8 o'clock in the morning, or 6 o'clock in the morning. God has his watchmen. He has his people all around the clock that are looking to the Lord and they are praying to him. And we are those servants of the night. And I want to talk about the servants of the night. And I want to talk about the word of God. But I'm going to show my, share my dream with you that I had last night. Uh, before I do that, yesterday, I felt very much in particular to just put everything aside. I didn't want to look at any of the news, though I did look at what happened with those two scriptures and them being criminalized. And I just felt such a need to just not look at news, not watch any videos, not do anything. And I felt a call. I felt such a call in my heart from the Lord that through the whole day, I felt it was a solemn, it was like my soul gathered itself together in a solemn assembly for those that weep and mourn for Israel. And so that I felt sorrowful, which I should have said in that solemn assembly. And there's an ownership to that long life that we have and the call that Christ has given to us and the gifts that he has placed inside of us for his great glory and for our victory, which has been won by Christ. But we got to walk through this desert and this wilderness because Satan has caused the entire earth to become a wilderness. So yes, we dwell in the wilderness. This was my dream last night. I saw myself with my husband in the car. We were driving in our neighborhood in some random area. And he said to me, hey, let's go visit that church. And I said, okay. And so he parks the car right in front of it. It was an old school church. Looks like it had been there forever. And we go in. And it's old school. It's got wooden pews, you know, the kind of aisle down the middle, pews on both sides, pulpit at the beginning, at the front, little steps that go up to the platform. The whole church was full of people. And the only openings were these back pews that were empty. And plus, that's where I would have taken the seat anyway. So it worked out. So we sit down on the pews. And the minister gets up and he's an older gentleman he's got white hair he's got thick glasses and he starts to give a message from the bible and it wasn't anything memorable he didn't say anything that i even remember from the dream but the scene as he was speaking the scene changed like it just kind of blurred out and came back in with crystal clarity and all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I, I, I see the entire church, everybody was in a deep sleep, everyone. And I stood up and I looked so I could look in the whole church. And there's like a scripture talks in Isaiah. It says about Israel during that time, it says, for he cast a deep sleep upon them. And so in this church that was full of people, those same people were all asleep. And I knew that I had stayed up all night long. I knew that I did because I was still sitting and I was wide awake and I knew it was the next morning. So I stood up because I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And so I walked towards the front and I see the minister and he's, here's the pulpit, here's the platform, and he's laying down in a deep, dead sleep behind the pulpit. And there was trash and garbage all around him. 
I mean, it looked like mountains of garbage and trash. Like somebody opened up a hundred bags of trash and strewn it around everywhere. There was trash all up and down the aisles. There was garbage all around the people and they were sleeping in it. And I said to my husband, let's go get up. Let's go. We're leaving. He left the church and he went out, I guess, to go start the car. And as I was getting up, I was picking up some uh, books that I'd brought with me. And I had this big, huge King James Bible. And it was this beautiful green with gold writing. And I was holding it like this and I was getting ready to leave. And this man appears before me, this old man, and he was angry with me. And he said, uh, he looked down at my Bible and he took it and he looked at it and he shoved it back in my arms. And he said, next time you come here, he said, you bring another Bible. And he stepped aside and I went out and I woke up and that was so penetrating to me. And I got up and I prayed and I spoke to the Lord about what I was seeing and it was resonating with me. And I'm talking about, and then here I was now in the night, getting up out of my bed. And maybe this may not speak to you, but hear it anyway. Because here, here's, here's what I want to say to you. I really want to sticky you note know, that because I want to say this to you. A good, good studentship stays and listens. This is no, it's not going to hurt me if you go. It really doesn't hurt me if you go. But I've been around a long time. And sometimes you're going to hear things you don't understand that are over your head. I did. But you know what? I knew one day I'd understand it. And one day I did. And sometimes there's things that we're never going to understand from the Lord. But we honor the Lord in that way. And we show him that we trust him that we don't know. But we know it's best for us that we don't know. But you see, there's, so the reason I'm saying this is there's many of you who are not called to be servants of the night. I look at Psalm 134, one, it says, behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. The temple priesthood. There was a night watch. There were the night night priests, and they were the ones who kept the fires burning in the temple on the altar. Even David says, "I wait for the Lord; my soul doth wait, and in His word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning; yea, more than they." that watch for the morning. There's something about the night service of Christ. Even the song of Solomon woman said, by night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the broadways. I will seek him whom my soul loveth. You see, there's a drive in us. There's something, there's a move, there's a life in us. Or the song of Solomon woman who says, before the day breaks and the shadows flee away, I will get thee to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense. I think of little the little boy, Samuel, who ministered before the Lord, um, ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And it says in 1 Samuel 3, 1, it says, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days and there was no open vision. And this was night. God was calling this little boy. He was calling him Samuel, Samuel. Here I am. You know, he finally was told by Eli, go tell him, here I am, Lord. But see, Samuel was called in the night. Nehemiah, when he heard that the walls are broken down, it said he went by night and he saw the whole place broken down and the whole 
area of Jerusalem scattered with debris. Many of Joshua's fights were during the night. Many things are done at night. Many potent things are done at night. You know, I think that Samuel being called at night, there was a reason. I believe that Samuel was probably somebody who spent hours at night. It says also of, at night with the Lord. G, it says of the Lord in Mark 135, that he arose a great in the morning, a great while before day, and he went out into a solitary place and there prayed. You know, it talks about Jesus at night in Gethsemane and being on trial all night long until the morning. A lot of powerful things happen at night. Jesus was arrested at night. When they had the Last Supper and they sung a hymn, they went out, Judas went out, and it was night when Satan filled him. There's something about the night. I was thinking so much about what happens in those hours. You cannot even begin to articulate them. I feel more alive in those hours in that place of prayer. You know, I spoke about Jesus where it said um, he found, a, he, it says he opened the book and he found the place where it was written. And I said to myself, the word it was precious in those days during Eli's day, during Samuel's day, there was no open vision. But I say to myself, but the word is precious in our day, in our lives. And there is, and the, and the vision has been opened to us, Jesus Christ. And in that dream that I had, that church was dead. I was the only one, not because I'm anything. I was just there in the dream. I'm just a representative figure at best, at best. That this is now the time that we are those that are awake at night. There is a pulsating in our chest. Out of the depths I have cried unto thee, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. If thou, O Lord, should mark iniquity, O, Lord, o God, who shall stand? My soul waits for the Lord. More than those. I say, yea, more than those that wait for the morning. My soul waits for the Lord. There's a song that says, my soul waits for the Lord in the hope of his promise. In the hope of his promise, deliverance will come. And you know what it says? God never forsakes those that seek him. He said, if you seek me with all your heart, I will be found of you. And so in that dream, that man said he didn't want that Bible, that beautiful King James Bible. He said, next time you come to this church and everybody's dead sleeping and the pastor sleeping and garbage everywhere, all in the background where I'm standing at the back of the church. And he did not want that Bible in that church. And we left. Is the word of God precious to you? Because you see, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And when Jesus, and it says that he had opened the book, he found the place where it's written. And you know what I said to myself when I saw that? You can find the place where it's written on my heart. Can Jesus find the place, a place of your heart where it's written? Because I'm telling you right now, Christian persecution is coming. And all those things that are sandwiched in between him opening the book and closing the book is everything that must be within us. And I said to myself, I heard the Lord say to my soul today and in my heart, rather, he said to my heart, because I was like, what I, I was trying to put thoughts together. And he, and I, so I started to look through my Bible. I was looking here and I was looking there and all of a sudden he just wanted me to shut it. And he said, Everything is already in there. You don't need to add any more. Get up there and speak. 
And you know, there does come a time, right? Where we just, we, we just run out into the field of God. And, and we, we have everything in there. I don't think we'll ever use everything that's inside of us. There's a lot in us. And I said to myself, as I was looking and I said, I'm going to say this to you. It says the spirit of the Lord is upon you. The spirit of the Lord is upon you too. Are you born again? Then the spirit of the Lord dwells within you and the spirit of the Lord is upon you. No, I'm not taking away from this unique portion that belongs only to Jesus Christ. It stands unique and alone forever and forever world without end. But I look and I say, but we say the spirit of the Lord dwells within us and we are anointed by Jesus Christ. Because we, many of us, have been baptized in the in fire and in power of the Holy Spirit. And to preach the gospel to the poor. Have you ever been poor? I mean, you may have had money your whole life, but you may have been poor spiritually, where you were always depressed all the time. And the more you spent money, the emptier you felt. And that you was no place of contentment. There was no godliness with contentment. There were, there's great gain. And so therefore, the more you spent, the poorer you became. I know I've been poor. I've been financially poor. I've been broke. Have you been brokenhearted? Because I sure have. Have you been a captive and received deliverance? Because I have. Have you ever felt like you were blind to things? But God had to open your eyes. He recovered your sight and you were given sight through the new birth and not just through the new birth, but through things, through through uh, trials, wars, temptations, even backslidings. Come on, let's be real. Everybody mostly has times in their life they backslide, but it's never for naught because we realize the power of his grace. And have you ever been bruised? I have. And so you see, we can open up this book within us and we can find the place where it is written. Jesus wants us to remember. See, the first thing it says, that he was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Because the poor hear differently. And he sent him to heal the brokenhearted. But the Lord says, as the Father hath sent me, so send I you. To preach deliverance to the captives. Only those who have been, been delivered as a captive can preach that. And to recover and the recovering of sight to the blind. Only those who have been blind and receive sight can preach deliverance to that. And those that are not at liberty and they are bound and they are bruised. But those of you, you like me, many of us, we've been set at liberty. From those deep bruises yes we can preach we can set up liberty them that are bruised and we can preach the acceptable year of the lord and let me say this to you it is very necessary that you see this where he opened the book he spoke these words he closed it and he sat down. See, first he stood up, then he sat down. This is indicative of his work being finished. Because when you sit down, it says, Jesus Christ has is raised up and he has, Hebrews chapter uh, one, verse one, that Jesus is, uh, has been raised into the heavens. I don't have the exact verse before me, but that he has, he's been exalted, he's been, he's ascended into heaven. And he has sat down at the right hand of God. You know, let me explain that. Many people say, okay, so sitting at the right hand of God, like, and there's all this, these Trinity words, but the right hand of God means 
the right hand is power, meaning he sits down as God in full power. All power in heaven and earth has been given unto Jesus Christ by his father. And Jesus died, not just so that we go to a dead church where everybody's in a dead sleep at this time of this hour, at the end of this church age. But you see, I represented, I believe, not that I was anything special, but I stayed awake all night. Now, that doesn't make me better. It doesn't make those that have the, the servants of the night better. It's just a different shift. And, and he puts it in you to do it. It says in Leviticus 6.13, The fire shall always be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. And you know, when you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and in fire, there's no chance that fire is going to go out unless you let it. Not that any of us can put out the actual fire of the Holy Spirit. But it seems to me that the more you keep moving through this wilderness called the earth and seeing the things that are happening, not just to the Jewish people all over the university campuses, things we never thought would happen. But those of us who are read our Bibles and study, we say, yes. We knew that that would happen, and it's happening in our day. And there will be heavy Christian persecution. And these, this bill that passed is just the beginning. Do you realize what that's going to take place? That means all the different places in the Bible that speak of the blood of Jesus Christ in connection to Jesus being the Lord and King, the Savior of the world, to both Jew and Gentile is going to come under threat. You see, it's so important that you spend your life having that place in your heart where it's written because this landscape is going to change and there's going to be, you're going to have to comfort yourself like David did. You're going to have to comfort those around you and all the years that you've been in the Lord, do you just want it to just add up to, yes, where you can just kind of tally up some years where you say, yes, I've been a Christian for 20 years, you know, well, so what? There's people that have been Christian for three years and they're mighty in the faith. They may not have the depth of character, but they're moving in the degree of where the Holy Spirit is leading them. Because I'll tell you something, there's a lot of older people who have sat down at the end of their race. This is not a judgment, it's just an observation. And I'm getting old, but let me tell you this, the last couple of days, you do feel your age. I'm in my 60s, you do start feeling it. But you know what I say to myself? I don't care. I did all a lot of things that I did through my whole life, praise God, and now here I am. And now all the smoke and all the fire of my external actions and works in the Lord, all that fire has gone down into the coals of my spirit where all the real heat is. Are you a servant of the night? Because the Christian body is in trouble. You may have a good church and I'm happy for you, but they are very, very few. Very, very few true believers. Very, very few true ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're, they're holding it together. But if you are a minister of the night, there is a charge in your life. And you don't go warfare at your own charges. Just like I said of Jesus, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You know, he said um, to he said, the spirit of the Lord is on him. He was anointed and he was sent. Those three things. And you know what? So are we. There is a maintenance of your life and of your duties in Christ. I love what Corey Ten Boom said. Just, she said, don't ask any questions. Just show up for duty. And there is a discipline to the servants of the night. Who by night stand in the house of the Lord. 
Even David said, I searched in the night. My spirit made diligent search. And he remembered the Lord. You see, there's something about the night that's completely different. And when you pray during that time, there's nothing like it. Amen. Get ready. Make sure that there is a place found on your heart, in your heart, where the word of God has become precious to you. Because now we do have open vision through the Holy Spirit revealing the word of God to us and stand by night in the house of the Lord. And in this desert, it gets harder and harder. But the Lord, if you're a true servant, worker of the Lord, and that means whatever that is you do. There's no, there's no, there's no rule. There's no, uh, well, I do more than her or he does more than that. And well, he's got a microphone in his hand and I just changed diapers. No, you got it all wrong. I would rather be the one changing diapers and being on my hands and knees scrubbing the baseboards of my house with the joy of the Lord. Doing the will of the Lord from my heart. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And I love these words. I'm going to leave with you. From Amy Carmichael. But he whose words have been as cool water to me in my lesser desert did in his own flesh endure the extremity of thirst. We cannot say of him, he has not been there. He has been there and he has not forgotten, nor will he ever forget what it was to be there. We have not an high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, tempted in all points like as we are. There are unrecorded experiences of suffering that lie there. Follow the single line of thought. It is like a track across a desert. And as soon as we come to the deep wells of cool water, whosoever drinks that water shall never thirst. Like cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. And in closing, I want to say this. I thought of what it said in Revelation 12, 11, For they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their own testimony. And I say to myself, when I, I see this picture of these people who overcame and all those who went before them, who were who fought the good fight, they finished the course, they kept the faith. And I think of them who went through trials and through sweat and through tears. Some of them were killed. Some of them were torn apart by lions. Some of them received not their dead to life again, that they may receive a better resurrection. There were those up there that wandered around in sheepskins and in goatskins and in the caves. And there's these people all through the millennia that are in that group up there. And what would it look like for us if we did not know what it was to be poor, what it was to be brokenhearted, what it was to be blind, what it was to be a captive, what it was and what it meant to be set at liberty when we were deeply bruised. If I went up there and I never experienced any of the things that I have had in my life, and you too, I'll say it of myself, I would be ashamed to show up there without scar or wound. I would have to find some place far from them and there would be no rejoicing in the overcoming life of the saints. And we don't overcome all at once. We overcome on our way as we go along. So remember, servants of the night, Jesus Christ, you're part of a division. We are part of a division and we are disciplined 
and we love not our lives into the death. We overcome by his blood, the blood of the lamb. And the word is precious to us and it is found. There's a place in there found where that book that was opened that day is written on our hearts. Get ready and don't be afraid. Amen. Remember, they thirsted not when he led them through the desert. And he'll do the same for us until all of us pass over to the other side.